Hello, my name is Ann Lassiter, and I come from an HD family, and I'm the former executive director of HD Reach. My father started developing HD symptoms when I was 11, so I've been living with this disease most of my adult life. Back in the 1970s, when my dad first started having trouble with keeping a job, there was very little known about HD. No one talked about it. There were few, if any, physicians or medical care and no way to definitively test for Huntington's disease. We have come so far since then, even though there's no cure yet. While there are great clinical breakthroughs in sight, I'd like to share with you that there is a lot to learn from living with Huntington's disease that can help you in other parts of your life. In fact, you have some great superpowers that you've already developed that can help you every day and well into your future. Families are full of superheroes, and I'm not just talking about those of us that have the mutant gene either. I've been affected by Huntington's disease, even though I'm gene negative, but I've lived most of my life not knowing what my gene status was. In fact, having HD has made me who I am, and I'd venture to say it's made you who you are as well. You probably looked at others and said, hmm, I sure don't want to handle Huntington's that way. And then there probably are others that you've looked at and said, oh my gosh, they're doing a great job. That's how I want to do it. My purpose here is to help you figure out what superpowers you have to live your life well and to find out if there's superpowers you'd like to develop. I know you have them. I do too. And I just wish I could fly. I've never known a superhero that had an easy life. Captain America was scrawny and was bullied. The Incredible Hulk got some serious toxic exposure and now has a serious anger problem. And the Black Widow is orphaned, brainwashed, and lied to by the Soviets. None of these folks had it easy. HD doesn't make life easy, and I'm not just talking about those of us that have a mutant gene either. I don't know a single person that is affected by Huntington's disease that hasn't been afraid or fearful at one point or another. What does the future look like? Will I be able to work? What if I pass it on to my kids? These are real and reasonable fears. There is a lot of uncertainty associated with Huntington's disease. Do I have the gene? When will my symptoms start? Is this anxiety and depression normal? Am I performing well? Should I marry or choose a certain career? Should I get tested? Does my sibling or my spouse have HD? I don't know what to expect. HD is different every single day. It's easy to become isolated with HD because we want privacy and we don't want people to pity us. We don't want to talk about it 24 seven, much less live it every day, all day long when we don't have to. We know we need to keep our health information private and there's shame associated with HD, so we don't often want others to know. We also don't wanna jeopardize our employment by telling the wrong person. It is not uncommon to witness the breakup of families with HD. We can be afraid that that's going to happen to us because we're afraid that those other folks can't, can't handle HD. Will people like me if they know I have HD or start acting funny? Sometimes it's just easier to engage with others. Sometimes it's just easier not to engage with others. HD can make your whole family feel weird. Generation after generation is affected, which leads to lots of observation of others for symptoms. You think about who got tested, who didn't get tested, do they have it? Every holiday, birthday party, picnic, Sunday dinner, sporting events, families ask themselves, did you see that? Did you see that movement? Did you hear what they said? Do you think they have it? And then there's the financial worries. What if I can't work or my spouse has HD and can't work? How will we pay for everything? 
How can I work if my partner has HD and I need to st stay at home and take care of them? How can I afford to make ends meet? And it can go on. And it sounds overwhelming, doesn't it? Well, as the old adage goes, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And you all are superheroes in my book. I watch the real superheroes, and they are the HD families living life well as they cope with Huntington's disease and these difficult situations. I know you can do it. So let's be the bold superheroes we are. You have superpowers that are good for living with HD, but guess what? They're good for normal living too. The things you learn from coping with HD can help you in your relationships, your work, and your financial future. Let me tell you about a family that was successful in coping with Huntington's disease. They've had HD in their family for generations. The mother had Huntington's disease and she and her husband had three children. They struggled with what HD meant to each of their kids in terms of relationships with significant others, their careers, their future children, and their financial well-being. This family talked openly about Huntington's, what it meant, and how they were taking care of their mother and what they needed to do. They worked hard to understand what HD was, and how it would affect their mom, and how the disease would progress, and how they would cope. They found that they developed superpowers to help them manage HD. And what they found out was that those superpowers were good in other parts of their lives as well. In other words, these superpowers were trans transferable to other parts of their lives. For example, one son grew up to be a sales manager. Because he learned to diffuse the irritability of his mom, he was often asked to help diffuse upset and angry customers and turn them often into raving Google reviews. One of the da daughters decided to be proactive in her financial planning, and she started at a very early age. This is a good plan for anyone who wants to one day retire. She was able to live securely in the knowledge that she had a plan for the future that protected her whole family. The third child decided to research HD, find out what resources were available to help the family, where the closest HD centers of excellence were, and what clinical trials might be av available to them. This helped the whole family know what was coming and what resources were available to them and how to expect the future to play out for them. I'm happy to say that this family dramatically altered the course of their experience with HD. While there isn't a cure yet, this family feels proactive and not reactive. They are showing the next generation that it can be better with each successive generation. So let's start talking about those superpowers that can really make a difference. Superpower number one, let's face it, getting a diagnosis of Huntington's disease can be overwhelming. I know that early on, all anyone had to say was HD and my brain shut down. When I was 34, the year before the typical onset of HD symptoms, I saw a flickering in my vision. And my hand went numb, and it was followed by a horrific headache. I knew that this was neurological. And because I was at risk for Huntington's disease, I went into overdrive. Luckily, I have a doctor in my family. I called her immediately, completely and totally wigged out. I was certain that this was HD. And after she calmed me down, she told me that she thought I was having a migraine because the symptoms I was exhibiting were not associated with Huntington's disease. I didn't know that before then. I was then diagnosed with migraines. Who knew I'd had them for years? And the point of my story is to remind you that seeking out information about what the symptoms are and are not of HD can help you cope and live your life in the best way you can. Knowledge about HD can help you separate fact from fiction. And is anyone at risk or someone who's been tested positive and is asymptomatic or caregivers know, the worries about what to come can be overwhelming. Having the resources to help you know what HD entails can alleviate a lot of these worries. Having accurate information about HD helps you make informed decisions about how you want to live your life. Everything from career choices 
to family choices, reproductive choices, and how you want to be cared for. Having thought about these things, in case I had HD, put me way ahead of many of my friends and peers, allowing me to have candid conversations with my family about my care, be it HD, heart disease, cancer, or even Alzheimer's. Knowing what to expect about the disease helps you anticipate problems. You can put some ideas together on how to solve those problems. It gives you a bit of advanced planning as to how to handle the anxiety and depression and obsessive thoughts that happen so often early in the disease. Understanding the stages of HD can help you plan how your home needs to be set up. Instead of doing it in a crisis, you can help it to make it a more normal process which can help you feel in, more in control. Most importantly, engaging healthcare professionals and other resources helps you to rely on those folks that have the expertise to guide you. Developing relationships with them helps you gain knowledge and confidence that you can take advantage of when things get overwhelming. And awareness of treatments and research and resources can give you hope for the future. I have some resources that have been really helpful to me, and I truly believe in learning from others that have gone before me or have the expertise that I don't have. These are great resources that I've used time and time again that have helped me and others. First of all, there's a lot of great HD specialists in North Carolina and the surrounding states that are experts in HD and can help you a great deal. Nothing is more comforting than knowing that the doctor you are seeing understands HD and you. This is important for all members of the family, whether you have HD, you're a loved one without HD, a caregiver, or someone at risk. They are a great source of knowledge and ways to manage the challenges of HD. And these experts include doctors and nurses and social workers and PTs and or physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists, and mental health therapists as well. They can help you understand HD and guide you. Of course, HD Reach has some great local resources for North Carolinians. The HD Reach family can connect you with resources in North Carolina and beyond. And there are other nonprofits that can help you too. HDO is an organization that helps kids affected by Huntington's disease. And HDSA, the Huntington's Disease Society of America, is the national organization that helps families across the country. If you want to learn about the latest and greatest in advances in clinical trials and research, HD Buzz is a great resource. They help to put all of this scientific and medical information in layman's terms. It's really helpful for me because I don't have a medical or a science background. The Huntington Study Group, also known as HSG, provides information and research for both clinicians and families. Lots of great information comes from the Huntington Study Group. Finally, tap into the families that have experience in coping with HD. These folks have great solutions to the challenges that HD presents. Knowing someone who has, has gone before you and has some ideas on how to manage these things can be a great help to you. Sometimes all you need is a sympathetic listener that understands what HD is like. Superpower number two, your peeps. Now that the coronavirus has caused us all to stay home and socially distance ourselves, staying connected seems to have taken on even more importance. In the case of HD, given the length of the disease and privacy issues, the issues around isolation, even in the midst of a crowd of people, can become magnified. Over the years, I've seen that it's become easier for families to discuss HD. There's a number of reasons for this. First, HD is better known than it was 50 years ago. Families have access to more information about the disease and physicians are ready and willing to treat HD patients and their families. Genetic testing is available if you want to find out if you have the mutant gene so you can make some informed decisions. And while there is no cure yet, there are medications that can help with symptoms of HD. And there are promising new trial, clinical trials just on the horizon. Young people are much more open to discussing the challenges of HD and facing it head on. But let's face it, 
Huntington's disease is hard and you can't do hard things by yourself. It isn't a failure to need help. It's a superpower to engage your support system when you need help. And, it can, and help can come in lots of forms from all sorts of people. First of all, there's your support system. Friends, families, neighbors, professionals, anyone that can help you in a positive way. You need help to process your feelings around HD. And this can take the form of mental health therapy, a good friend to talk to, a spouse, siblings, even your children can help you cope. My husband was especially good at helping me put things in perspective. One day I dropped something and I looked at my husband and I said, oh my gosh, I know I have it, I just know it. He looked at me with a deadpan expression and said, well, at least you have Huntington's to blame it on. For me, I just have to blame that kind of stuff on being stupid. Oh, I just laughed. It helped me put things in the right perspective. Everybody drops things. Everybody says things that they shouldn't have. It added just the right amount of humor for me. He's done this for me for so many things, and it really helps. You need a break from HD, and your friends can give it to you. This can take the form of helping with chores and errands, but also can help with things like visiting, having fun, recreational activities, going to sporting events. It isn't healthy to focus on HD all the time, and others can help you with this. Life is still going on while you have HD. Don't miss it. Allow your friends and family members, neighbors, and coworkers, if appropriate, to help you. If you have children, you know that you can help them cope. They need to know that you love them. They're watching how you cope with HD, but never doubt that they can help you too. One mother used to say when her daughters came home from school, oh, you girls just add so much spice to our lives. It sounded corny, and it was, but it helps both parents and kids to know that they add something special to each other's lives. Take the time to enjoy that and let it feed your spirit. Community. Just because you have HD doesn't mean you can't enjoy and become involved in the community. Exercise, hobbies, virtual groups, and volunteering can all feed your well-being. Spiritual communities such as church, temples, and mosques can be a great support to you. The cure to isolation is to connect with others. The social distancing we are experiencing right now is helping to identify new ways for us to be together to prevent isolation. There are lots of ways to be with others and let them be a part of your life. You'll be surprised how much you give to others, even when it seems that they're helping you. Superpower number three, problem solving. Let's be real, life brings lots of problems and HG, HD just puts them on steroids. And HD families are the best problem solvers in the world. The world could learn a lot from us. It's our superpower because HD is different in every single person. There are similarities, but yet it's different. So we have to be creative in our problem solving. There are a couple of things you can do to make this superpower even more powerful. The first is to be observant. It's easy to stick your head in the sand and not want to see what's changing, but that really only postpones the inevitable. If you are aware of something, you can do something about it, even if you can't make it go away. Keep a journal, observe things on a regular basis, for example, like daily or weekly. What this involves is paying attention to the things that are happening every day, the things that are demotivating, motivating, overwhelming, successful, stressful, and enjoyable. Observing these things help you find solutions that are more likely to succeed and to decrease those that are less likely to succeed. For example, if you notice anxiety starting to increase, you could watch to see if there are any times when your loved one or you is less anxious, anxious and try to incorporate those into your daily life. If it's increasing and lasts for more than two weeks, it might be time to connect with a doctor for a consultation about medications. 
or a check-in visit with the therapist to see if there's some coping strategies you could employ. The next thing you can do is to brainstorm with others. Two heads are better than one. Talking over problems and issues often helps you to get better solutions than if you tried to solve them on your own. If nothing else, it helps you to know that you're on the right track. There is power in your peeps. The third thing you can do is to think outside of the box. Who said your solutions had to be normal? What is normal anyway? And what does it matter if it works and it's not harmful? Who cares if it looks funny? As my brother's disease advanced, he had some trouble being able to look at the greeting cards that others had sent him that really meant a lot to him. So we bought a transparent, clear shoe holder that went over the door. He could see every one of his cards without needing to get up or ask for help. It worked like a charm and he was super happy with it. It gave him great comfort. The next thing you can do is anticipate, anticipate, anticipate. Parents of babies and toddlers are really great at this. And somehow when our kids grow up, we stop doing it. But I'm suggesting that you should keep on doing it. Why should this be any different for HD? Bring snacks and drinks to help with the hangries that come up. Plan exit strategies from parties if your loved one or you gets anxious in crowds. Let others know what makes you uncomfortable or anxious so everyone can plan in advance. Have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Sometimes plan A works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes plan B needs to come into play. If you have three alternatives, one of the three is likely to work especially if you've been observant, brainstormed, thought outside of the box, and anticipated things. And probably most important is not to be too hard on yourself. Sometimes it takes many tries to figure out the right answer. Have conf confidence and faith that you will find the right answer. Superpower number four, planning for your financial future. When you start in your first real job, financial advisors will tell you to start saving for your retirement. For people at risk for Huntington's disease or who have Huntington's, it's really important to do this regardless of your stage in life. Some quick ideas around this include things like, first of all, connecting with your attorney or a financial planner, financial advisor, your social worker, and HDSA's disability expert, Allison Bartlett so they can help you decide what's most important for you at this stage in your life. They can help you with a wide range of things like your healthcare power of attorney, wills, applying for SSDI, how to make the most of your savings or 401k, and any retirement programs that are open to you. You don't have to be work wealthy to work with any of these folks. The second thing you can do is to start thinking about this early so you're better prepared if you need to care for someone with HD or if you've got things, or so you've got things in place for yourself if you have HD. HD can be really expensive from lost income to care costs. Address it early on and things will be more manageable. Take advantage of government assistance and know when the best time is to apply for it. Try not to let your pride get in the way of obtaining assistance when you need it. You can be proud of the steps you're taking Remember, this is a chance to show the next generation how to live well with HD. This is something to be proud of. So here's the real message. These are good for you, whether you have HD or not. These are good long-term financial skills and will serve you no matter your stage in life and will help you um, get, grow to a ripe old age. Having HD in your family has made you who you are. Many of the things you've coped with are skills you can apply to things that have nothing to do with HD. Be proud of what you've learned and what you can do. Educating yourself is important whether or not it's for HD, COVID-19, applying for that dream job, or something even as normal as raising a family. Surrounding yourself with your peeps helps everyone. Isolation is tough and it makes it harder to cope with anything. But even in the face of this pandemic, people are learning how to connect, even if it's virtual. We need connections. 
and staying connected help, helps us cope with everything better. HD families are the best with coming up for, with solutions to the problems we face. Everyone is different, and with a little help from our friends, we can find answers to the problems we face. It might not look like anyone else's answer, but that doesn't matter because it works for us. And who knows, maybe your solution can help somebody else. Planning for your financial future just makes sense. And like all the experts say, start early when you are young. But if you aren't young, it's never too late to start. Plan for the way you want your life to be at every stage, be it when you are well and when you aren't. The reality is one day we'll all be older. This is about planning that journey. I just want you to know you really are a superhero, even if you don't know it. <laughs>